All right, hey everyone, it's Professor Smith or Miss Smith, depending on who's watching this video. And today I'm going to be going over um, a phylogeny example in the sense of using candy as our organisms, okay? So please keep in mind that an organism is a living thing. However, for this demonstration, we're gonna go ahead and use candy. Not only are we gonna fill out descriptions for the specific candy, we're gonna talk about traits, etc., and doing the phylogeny trait. Now, before we get into it, let's discuss our organisms, okay? So first we have, and again, you could do this at home too, obviously. I will have a link, a list in the description of the candies and as you can clearly see in the video. So here we have our organism known as Starburst, Hershey's, Rollo, Milky Way, and then of course Snickers. Okay, so we need our candy, a plate to cut our said candy so that way we can see what's inside, a handy dandy knife, be safe ladies and gents and all the people in between, please make sure that you don't cut yourself, use common sense. And then of course, we're gonna have our handy dandy information that we're gonna fill in for our table. Now, Before we even do said table, let's discuss each individual organism on its own. So let's say this is our organism. And again, we're just using candy as our representation for real living things, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my organism. My organism is Starburst. Red ones are always the best. Fight me in the video, just joking. But we're gonna go ahead, take our handy dandy knife, cut on through. And then what do we see? We don't really see any filling. We see the color red. It was a square shape. So where am I writing this information? Where am I talking about the traits? Well, you could be talking about the traits on your notebook or on a piece of paper, depending on how we're doing this lab. Okay, so if I were to just talk about Starburst. All right, so our organism Starburst, well, it's red. That's a trait. It's square shape. That's also a trait. I don't really see no filling, right? That's also a trait. Lack of having something can be a trait within itself. Um, I know that it's made of sugar. It's a fruit candy. right? Fruit flavor. And if you want to get more specific, you could say, well, is this, I think it's cherry for red. And that's really about it. That's all we can really put as far as for traits, right? So these would be traits. Traits for Starburst. Sorry, I can't spell it. Traits for Starburst. Starburst, I can't spell it. <laughs> Starburst, okay? So remember, a trait, right? A trait is coded by our genes, okay? So please keep that in mind when we're talking about vocabulary terms for traits, genes, DNA, etc. Keep all those words in mind because they're important. Let's look at our next organism. We're gonna go ahead and look at a milky way. Right? And again, we're gonna go ahead and Cut it in half. Again, please be careful with your knife. Here's what it looks like from the inside. So here's what it looks like on the inside. So we have nougat and we also have caramel or caramel, depending on how you're pronouncing it. That nougat is just a certain type of filling. Nougat is usually made of um, sugary uh, sh chocolate. So it's not just chocolate on its own, like a sugary type of chocolate. That's what nougat is. So nougat in the sense of what, what do you mean, professor? What are you talking about? We're talking when this layer right here is nougat, this layer right here is caramel or caramel, depending on how you pronounce it. And then of course it's surrounded by chocolate. Now that we went ahead and opened up, what was it? Our organism Milky Way, right? Let's go ahead and talk about the Milky Way traits. So biggest thing, obviously, 
made of chocolate. Second thing, it had caramel in it. Caramel, depending on your pronouncing it. It has nougat. Um, it was also a square shape. It's also made of sugar because of course it's candy. And that's really it. I don't really have any other traits that I can think of off the top of my head. Oh, it had filling, I guess, if you wanna get technical. It has filling, okay? And that's really it for the traits for a Milky Way. Next organism we're gonna go ahead and look at a Hershey's chocolate bar. Here's a close up. And again, handy dandy knife. And why are we cutting it in half, right? We're cutting it in half for the sake of just consistency, right? Even though this experiment or lab is very simple, we wanna keep our procedures consistent. We wanna keep our treatment of each thing that we are testing out consistent. If we go ahead and cut this, we look, at, we look and we see that there's no filling. It's just chocolate and it's square. For Hershey's, we're gonna go ahead and write down its traits. So, it is also made of chocolate. We can also write that it is also square. All right. There is no filling whatsoever. So there's no nougat, there's no caramel. So let's just keep it with the consistency of the trait that there is no filling. And it's also made of sugar because again, it's candy. So we just wanna keep this in mind that it's still made of sugar. Okay. Let's move on to the next organism. The next thing we're gonna look at here is a Rolos. Sorry, I opened it up ahead of time. We're gonna go ahead and look at a Rolos. And here it is. And again, to keep our level of treatment consistent and the same throughout our experiment, we'll once again, go ahead and cut through down the middle. And now we're gonna go ahead and look at the, if it has anything inside. And we can clearly see that it has filling in it more specifically caramel or caramel, again, however you pronounce it. So let's go ahead and talk about Rolo and more specifically their traits. For Rolos, it is also made of chocolate. It's got caramel inside. So if it's got caramel inside, that means it has some sort of filling in it, right? We didn't really see anything else. The shape of it was particularly different. It was a circle shape, so that's interesting. And then of course, because it's a candy, it's made of sugar. That's really it. There's really nothing else to say about the traits for Rolos. We're gonna move ahead to our final organism, the handy dandy Snickers bar. And again, to be consistent with our treat level of treatment for this experiment, we're gonna cut down the middle. Because again, we wanna be consistent with our lab. Okay, we went ahead and cut down the middle. All right, and this is the inside. So let's talk about the inside. We can clearly see a lot of different things. So first off, we can clearly see that there is nougat. We also see that there are nuts inside as well. More specifically, we wanna get specific peanuts. And then of course we have caramel, All right? So nougat, nuts, and caramel are within this filling of Snickers. It's also made of chocolate and it has this square rectangle shape. So again, same thing like the others. Let's talk about the traits. Let's talk about the traits for Snickers. So obviously the biggest one, again, got chocolate. It's made up of a filling. And more specifically, what's in that filling? Well, there's definitely caramel or caramel, again, depending on how you pronounce it. There is nougat inside. There are also nuts, more specifically peanuts inside. It is also have, it also has a squarish shape or rectangle shape. And of course it is a candy. So we need to write down that it is made of sugar. There's really nothing else as far as traits are concerned for Snickers. Now that we've written down all the traits, right? Depending on your instructor, your professor or teacher, again, depending on who is going over this information, might tell you to categorize this information, categorize the traits into something that makes sense. Okay, so here is all of our data combined together in a nice, beautiful format. It's all placed together for us to see. So each individual, um, or organism with their traits. We need to put this information though into a data table, all right? In order for us to 
start off our cladogram, we have to put our data in a concise way. So let's go ahead and do that. First, what I want to do is find what they all have in common, right? We're talking about cladograms and we're talking about traits. And so the point of this lab exercise is for us to build these cladograms. And so what is the purpose of the cladograms is to classify these organisms based on, you know, which traits that have been passed down and which traits are no longer present in certain um, organisms. So basically comparing descendants with ancestors. So if we look closely, we can clearly see that all of these organisms have sugar in common. So I'm going to definitely use this as my as one of my traits, as one of my characters for my data table. And let's say you've already discussed as a group which ones you want to fill in for your data table. So let's say I discuss this with my group or my lab partner, again, depending upon who I'm working with. And I decided that I want to use sugar, chocolate, nougat, caramel, and peanuts. Uh, I want to use those particular traits to build my tree. And that's totally fine. So when you're building your tree, more specifically when you're building your data table for your tree, this is how your layout should look. So on the left-hand side, you're going to go ahead and have the characters. At the top of the table is where you're going to have your organisms. These are all the organisms we are comparing for our cladogram or phylogenetic tree. And again, characters just mean the traits. They are used interchangeably. So let's start with sugar, which we already did. When we're filling in this data table, we're going to use one to represent that the organism has that trait or character. And a zero means that they don't have that character or trait. So we know that every single one of these organisms has that trait. All right, we've already discussed this. Now let's say, again, we figured out who has what. Say we filled in our table, right? Let's say we figured out all the ones and the zeros. So Snickers has all of the traits. Starburst only has sugar as a trait, so it gets a one and everything else is a zero. Rolos only has sugar, chocolate, and caramel, so those get ones, but it does not have nougat or peanuts, so that gets a zero. Milky Way has sugar, chocolate, nougat, and caramel, so they all get ones. However, it does not have peanuts, so that gets a zero. Hershey's has sugar and chocolate, so those areas will get ones, and nougat, caramel, and peanuts get zeros because Hershey's does not have that in it. Now that our data is organized, we need to show our data in a way that is visual. This is where the cladogram comes in. So we need to start with the character that they all have in common, right? So they all have the character sugar in common. Okay, so this means that they share a common ancestor, which is the point of building a cladogram or a phylogenetic tree. One more thing before we move on, we're going to just add the number, so all the ones at the bottom, and it'll make sense why we do that. Okay, so first things first, let's say we added them all up. So Snickers has a five, Starburst has a one. Rolos has a 3, and Milky Way has a 4, and Hershey Bars has a 2. Again, this information will make sense as we go later down the road. So let's start with our cladogram. We start with a line, we start with our nodes, and we start with the slashes. So our first slash, right, on the actual slanted line itself, right, so on the actual slanted line itself, so this right here, this is going to be where all the traits go. The branches that branch off, those are going to be the organisms or clades. And again, if you were listening to lecture, you'll know what the word clade means. So the node here, the node of the cladogram represents a common ancestor. Sugar represents the common characteristic, okay? So the further down on the cladogram, that's the most common characteristic, meaning that these organisms, when we, put, when we start to put them there, they all will encompass sugar. And again, we'll talk about the different characters in a moment. So let's go ahead and construct that cladogram even further. Let's move on to the next common trait, which is chocolate. 
So let's say we are continuing on with our cladogram. So here at the bottom, right, again, this is the bottom node is going to represent the common ancestor. As you move up, it will represent the next common ancestor. Between the nodes are going to be the traits or the characters. So our first character that we have already, you know, said that we're going to use is sugar. And that makes sense because, again, they all have sugar in common. The next character we said is going to be chocolate, okay? However, I am not going to put starburst above chocolate. It's going to go below chocolate, all right? Why is it that starburst is going to be below chocolate but above sugar, okay? It is below the chocolate line because starburst does not have chocolate, the chocolate character. So it would be below the line. However, starburst is made of sugar, so it is going to be above the line. So if the organism is above the particular character line, it means it has that trait. If an organism is below a character line, then it means it doesn't have that trait. Let's move on to the next common character trait. So the next common character trait is caramel. Please note that we didn't move on to nougat because it is not the next most common character trait. All right, if I look here, caramel has one, two, three, versus nougat only has one, two, two. Only two organisms have nougat. However, caramel, there are three organisms that have it. So that's the next most common character trait. So again, I'm going to continue on. So after chocolate, right? So above chocolate, so Hershey's does have chocolate, so I'm going to go, put, go ahead and make sure it's above that chocolate line. However, it does not have caramel, so it's going to go below the line. And again, why does it go below the line for caramel? Because Hershey bar does not have caramel in it. Okay. Notice one more time that on the actual slanted line itself are going to be our traits, and the little branches that are branching off, those are where the organisms are going to go. Now, I'm not going to finish the rest of the cladogram for you. Hopefully, the rest of the information makes sense. I have full confidence you'll be able to complete the information based off of the original characters. All right, so just one more hint for you before you go. So why did I have us do the totals for the, for the actual table? So if you noticed, right, Starburst only has one of the traits. So it's going to start at the bottom of the cladogram. And then what was the next one? So Hershey's bar has two of the traits. So it was above Starburst. And again, we can see that clearly if we look back we look back here at our chart. So that's my last and final hint for you. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it made sense. Please make sure um, to finish off your cladograms and I hope you have a wonderful day, evening, whenever you're watching this later.